Uh, let's go to C. The personality. Personality of the Holy Spirit. We want to know, is he a person? Is he a person? One, he speaks. Praise God. He speaks. That tells you he's a person. No, Acts 13. I like what was happening here. Now look here. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manain which had been brought up with, the Herod, with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said Amen. You get that? <clears throat> the Holy Ghost said he was there and he spoke. Praise God. Of course he spoke to someone. He spoke through the mouth of someone. I think you have been, have you ever been in a meeting and somebody just starts speaking and speaking and it's God speaking, it's not the person. Amen? He speaks. The Holy Spirit comes and he takes over and he speaks. Sometimes we call that prophecy. But just speaking. He speaks. The Holy Ghost speaks. Number two, the Holy Ghost teaches. He teaches. John 14, verse 26, Jesus said he will teach you and remind you everything I've taught you. Amen. He teaches. He is the teacher. By the way, we say, we call it, when I was in a school called the school of Christ, we were told Christ is the lesson. Amen. Christ is the lesson that we learn. He is the true man. Everyone is fake. Jesus is the only true man. And what we are doing is we are learning to be like him. We are learning to be true like him. Amen. That's growth. Growth is measured by how much of the likeness of Christ I am attaining every day. Amen. When you say maturity, and that's why we need to look at some serious things in discipleship. I have a problem having a program of discipleship just going on but there is no measure. There must be, it must be measurable. Praise God. It must be measurable because there must be the minimum, the, 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 the minimum requirement for being called a disciple. Amen. There has to be. They are acceptable. There has to be some acceptable measure of the character of Christ that someone is revealing every day in their lives. You know? If I say I'm a true disciple of Jesus, what qualifies me to say I'm a disciple of Jesus is because there is a measure of the character of Christ that I am manifesting consistently in my life. You know? There has to be a measure, a certain measure of the character of Christ that is found in me every day. That qualifies me to be called a disciple. We cannot have a discipleship class going on from man, from uh, January to December and then we give certificates and we are not measuring whether these people are developing the character of Christ. Praise God. So, we learn Christ, but who teaches us? It is the Holy Spirit. Praise God. He is the teacher. We say he manifests Christ. We say that. His work is to manifest Christ. He reveals Christ to me. It's impossible to know Jesus except by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. As a born again, I want to know Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit who will show me Christ. Now that tells you just how close you need to be to him. Amen. How close you need to walk together with him. Someone said, I, I, don't, I don't remember the name of that preacher, but he said, I cannot go to the post office without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know? and another one said, well, if you're talking about the, whole, the post office, I don't think I can leave this place without him. We need to be close to him. Praise God. Close to him. Uh, Genesis 6, 3, he's the one who strives with the sinners. The one who strives with the sinners. That is when you preach conviction in the hearts of people is done by the Holy Spirit. Some resist him, but he keeps talking. Amen. 
striving with sinners. And Genesis 6, 3, God says, my spirit will no longer strive with man. Imetosha. Ingine inafikanga mahali, anakuambia ka. Kama ni hivyo unataka. He strives with man, with sinners. Then uh, Acts 9, verse 31, comforts. He is the comforter. He comforts. Comforts a human being, a person comforts. Remember, we are talking about personalities, isn't it? If he is some active force, he cannot comfort. Comforting means you have some feelings, isn't it? Yeah, you have some feeling. And the Holy Spirit has feelings. Amen. He is a person. He comforts. Uh, Romans 8.26, he helps us in our infirmities. That is in our time of weaknesses. He comes in. Amen. To strengthen you. He is the one who strengthens us. We have a lot of infirmities by the way. No one is strong. I'm telling you. No one is strong. Only the Holy Spirit comes to give us strength in the times of weakness. Now that tells you we need to be close to him. Amen. We need to be close to him. Ephesians 4 verse 30. He is grieved. He says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and grieve not the Holy Ghost. Grieve not the Spirit. He gets grieved. He is a person. He is a, he is a person with feelings. He gets grieved when you do some stupid things. And sometimes we do foolish things. Did you know that? I'm telling you, sometimes Christians, we can be so foolish. <laughs> so foolish. And he gets grieved. And the Bible tells us, do not grieve him. I was thinking, I said, I was saying, the Holy Ghost catches feelings many times. That's why we are told, don't grieve him. He catches feelings. <laughs> you can grieve him and he walks away. I think it's Bishop Mbai who told us, uh, the Holy Ghost came in like a dove. He can also fly away like a dove. Because doves fly away. So stop grieving him. <laughs> Praise God. Don't grieve him. Act 7.51 He can be resisted. He can be resisted. I think this is Stephen talking about those people. He rebuked those uh, the Pharisees and the Jewish people. He told them, you have been consistently resisting the Holy Spirit. People resist him. And many times he even speaks to our hearts and we resist him. Sometimes he sends you somewhere, you resist him. You refuse. Sometimes he speaks and then you say, a thing told me. Have you ever heard something like that? Something Something told me. You know? <laughs> kitu tu ikaniambia. Eh? Ka kitu tu kakaniambia. Ka kitu. So the Holy Ghost has become ka kitu. Ka kitu tu kakaniambia. That's the immaturity of Christians. We don't even understand who we are relating with. We are saved but we don't even know who saved us and who is keeping us in this thing. 